Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and we have a treat today. This is a book uh, called Locks and Keys Throughout the Ages. Some of you will be already aware of this book. It was first published in 1957 um, by the author Vincent J. M. Eras, who worked for the Lips Lock Company, now owned by Asa Abloy. It was reprinted in 1974, I believe, and Artisan Ideas got permission from Asa Abloy, who now own the Lips Lock Company brand, to republish it once again. Um, and Artisan Ideas were very kind to send me this copy for review. Now, what's wonderful about this book is that they haven't made any additions to the original 1957 version other than make the uh, quality of the pictures a little bit clearer, uh, change the typeface to make that a bit clearer, and add, obviously, a more up-to-date uh, preface to the book. So what's really nice about this is it sort of encapsulates... Um, locks from the dawn of time to uh, to the present day that this book was written in 1957 and, and I really love it for that. So what does the book cover? Well it really is a concise book. It covers a lot in a relatively short space and um, and again you know it's really snappy. Uh, it talks about what is a lock, uh, metallurgy, so you know how locks developed from the moment that people started to be able to work and cast metals. Um, talks about the first metal locks. It goes on to uh, discuss modern locks and their applications, permutations in locks and keys, safe locks, strong room locks, safe deposit locks, and a, a brief amount on keyless combination locks. What's really nice is that there is actually some really clear terminology here. Um, and it's just a, a really nice little glossary of terms. And I think if you are interested in history and locks and engineering and metallurgy, uh, but you don't have a great depth of knowledge about locks themselves, this is a great place to start. And it means you won't be left behind with the terminology throughout the rest of the book. And it really is clear. I mean, um, let me just find a bit on the definition of award. And it's just so concise. A fixed projection in a lock to prevent a key from entering or turning unless suitably shaped. I mean, I could not put it clearer myself, and that's the kind of language throughout. It's really clear, really, really precise. Then we have a small but very valuable section on the etymology of the words locks and keys. Where did those words come from? How do they get into modern usage? Really, really interesting reading. I think I mentioned that this really does start at the beginning of time, as far as it were, um, in regards to locks and locking devices. And, you know, it goes it goes all the way back to the days where the, all the options you had were to hide stuff under a big rock, um, through to having guards and slaves to look after your stuff. And, of course, um, more modern solutions like using pet crocodiles um, to look after your stuff. Apparently this really happened laser beams optional. Um, and then we slowly get up to uh, more recognisable locking devices, such as a precursor of the pin tumbler, which you may already be aware of in the way that you'd use this uh, almost toothbrush looking device, uh, which if you think about it, acts a bit like uh, key pins to push out a locking mechanism, which has what you'd see as the opposing pins, which you could consider to be a driver pin. So you can definitely see in these ancient sort of Egyptian style locks, the precursors of the modern pin tumbler. So as you go through the book, you encounter more and more locks, uh, getting more and more modern as, as we progress. And what's really interesting is that very, very quickly, you get to locks with a form factor, which is instantly recognizable even today. With some of these locks um, going back as far as the 14th and 15th century, looking like uh, mid-century, 19th century locks um, like this. I mean, I really don't think that this is very far away from these early 14th and 15th century locks, other than the fact that 
one employs levers and the others employ probably a warded mechanism. I was very strongly tempted to actually call uh, this video, I came for the locks but I stayed for the keys, um, just because I, I mean I always knew there were all mental and ornate keys out there, but when locking devices were bespoke handmade things made by skilled craftsmen, people really did uh, you know, invest some money into making ornate keys to go along with them. And, you know, the book is just full of just the most beautiful artisan uh, locks and keys. And, uh, you know, it, it really is just a fantastic thing just to pick up and just peruse and, and look at and admire, especially if you're into fine craftsmanship like this. I mean, clearly, if you thought that the uh, keys were a bit fancy, just have a look at some of these amazing uh, locks. I mean, just gorgeous. I think my favourite uh, of these ornamental but yet still working locks um, is the lock of the main entrance of the Mom Town Hall in Belgium. I mean, just look at that thing. I would absolutely love to have that on my front door. Absolutely. One of my very most favourite parts of this book is just this elegant picture here on warded keys and false keys and it's a concept which I knew about already but i never seen a diagram that so succinctly puts across the message in that you would have at the time some popular warded locks with complicated warding on the inside of the lock so you needed a corresponding key with complicated cutouts in it so that the key could pass through the warding and engage with a latch or lever which would allow the bolt to be thrown in the lock. However, this type of mechanism could be quite easily bypassed by creating false keys, which um, is an exploit that criminals have used, in that you can just create a skeleton of the key, essentially a skeleton key, which would bypass the majority of the warding and allow the latch to be operated directly once the key has turned. Um, and of course, if you had a large enough set of false keys, you could probably get your way through quite a large amount of different types of warding. The author has something to be said about this, which I quite like, which is, it is to be regretted that a great many people place their entire confidence in this cheaper class of key, which although of a complex design, does not offer any reasonable security. And then underneath that passage is probably my favorite passage in the entire book because I believe it is still extremely pertinent today. It says, sheer ignorance of the part of the public accounts for this. The majority of people have never even glimpsed the lock mechanism and its operating parts. Neither have they really studied the functioning of these parts. Moreover, qualified and expert knowledge of lock security belongs to a small minority. And I do believe that that is still very true today with people buying um, cheap, uncomplicated locks with quite severe security deficits. Um, and I can only believe that that happens because of a lack of knowledge about what they are buying and what's inside the lock and why certain aspects of a lock are important for your security. Um, I have to admit, I was probably part of that group of people before I started doing lock picking. Talking of lock picking, there is a small section on lock picking, um, and it mentions, of course, Mr. Hobbs, the famous lock expert who um, has done some amazing picking feats. And indeed, here's a picture of the author um, enjoying the act of picking a lock and understanding its security um, and some of the tools that he's collected. So. Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, uh, despite the way he's dressed, this is very much <laughs> like like how I uh, uh, sit and enjoy picking locks at home. The book, of course, covers notable locks um, from the time of writing. Things like the Brahma lock and uh, locks made by Chubb, including the Chubb detector. It talks about lever locks and uh, of course it talks about pin tumblers and or cylinder locks as it likes to call them and and really everything that you could imagine um, after that it really does go into um, a, a really good amount of information uh, but 
I think not too much. I think what's nice about this um, whole book is it's incredibly concise. It's not a massive volume, but the language is really, really accessible. The information is, I think, um, perfect for anybody who is remotely interested in locks, locking mechanisms, security, engineering, design. I mean, you know, it's it's just such a nice package. It really, really is. And um, I've thoroughly enjoyed reading it. I, I can't think of anybody in my circle of friends and acquaintances who pick locks and collect locks who would not find this an absolute joy. Well, I hope you enjoyed my review on this. This is Locks and Keys Throughout the Ages, published by Artisan Ideas. Please use the link below to find the book. There is a uh, discount code in the description as well. And I'll see you all next time.